G'day, this is Andrew Price here from BlenderGuru.com and in this video I'm going to give you a short introduction to the vast topic of architectural visualization. So in the 3D World magazine that you have just read or are still reading, um, I showed you how to create this image right here. Um, now, I didn't want to just do a tutorial on this image because you can sort of get that from reading the actual tutorial itself in the magazine. Um, and really the technical side of creating, um, you know, an image like this is really secondary to understanding what actually goes behind it. So I wanted to instead focus this video on uh, something that a lot of artists uh, have trouble with when they're um, you know, getting started with architectural visualization. And that is where do you start? Because despite it being such a hugely popular um, topic, you know, everywhere online, everyone's doing it, um, there doesn't seem to be that many people teaching it, teaching the actual fundamentals behind it. Why are certain things done? Why is a camera pointed this way? Why do you use certain decorations here and not there? You know, et cetera, et cetera. And it, it's, it's, it, you can be very, very overwhelming. And that's exactly where I was um, when I started out, you know, doing architectural visualization about two years ago. Um, I tried it in the past. I was bad at it. I failed and failed. And I eventually just taught myself over the course of the year. And uh, I, I eventually I created this animation that you're watching right now. Um, and I then posted it on Reddit. It got to the front page. It was vastly popular to my surprise. And uh, yeah, overall it was a you know fun little adventure. And so I thought I would share some of the uh, some of my advice to people out there that are getting started. Okay, so here's uh, five tips in getting started. First step, if you are new to architectural visualization, start by recreating photographs. Don't try to create your own scenes from scratch. And the reason for that is that there is so much theory and uh, choices that go into decorating an interior, for example, or lo and behold, an actual exterior, like the actual design of the architectural, you know, the, 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 the building itself, that's even more complex. There's so much theory involved in that and the understanding behind it that you don't really have the skills to create your own scenes from scratch. Now, it might seem boring to start with photographs, but this is really the foundation, the building blocks that you can then, uh, once you've figured out the basics of it, you can then go ahead and start taking things, different ideas, from lots of different people and putting it together and start making your own scenes from scratch, which is um, you know what I eventually ended up doing. So um, many years ago, I gave this a shot. I went to a, uh, when I was working as a construction worker, um, I, I wanted to become an architectural visualization artist. And so I went to a, uh, a magazine, uh, a news agent, and I bought a magazine and I brought it home and I made uh, this image that you can see right here. This is an old image. I just want to say that. It's like five or six years old. Um, this was like my first attempt. It's horrible. I can see in hindsight why this is irritating to look at. It's far too saturated. Textures are wrong. Everything's wrong. Oh, I don't like it at all. Um, but it was it was a start, you know, and uh, it, it's important to start with something that looks real and try to create that before trying to make your own choices. My second image turned out a lot nicer, mostly because I was using a different rendering engine. I think this one was uh, Indigo, um, and this one turned out a lot nicer. And then I sort of gave it up for several years after that, and uh, until picking it up again sort of two years ago, um, where I went, after I went to Japan, I came back with a book by Tadeo Andow, and I tried to create some of his images as photorealistically as possible. As possible, so I had the photographs next to me, and I just tried to make it as as realistically as possible. And so these are the images that I made from that. Um, so doing this, you will learn an incredible amount because when you have the photograph next to you, not only are you learning the uh, you know the, the 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 choices that were made, like you know this wooden texture that was used there, or or this decoration that was used there. Why was that one chosen? You're not only learning that, but you're also learning how hard it is, or or how much is involved in making something look photorealistic. Because for example, in this image right here, um, on this, uh, this left image right there along that wall there, um, I originally just thought, you know, just chuck up a, uh, a concrete, you know, plate 
uh, texture and then that would be the end of it. And then I realized it was it was very, very unrealistic and I had to figure out why that was. And then I realized, of course, you have to add in a grunge map, make that affect the specularity, et cetera, et cetera. So you'll learn so much through recreating photographs. So if you can set yourself that task, just like go for one week, set yourself a task, seven days, I'm gonna pick one photograph and I'm gonna try and recreate it using whatever software it is that you're out there trying to use. Um, and, and just set yourself that goal. And then once you have finished it, post it online, seek feedback. This is very important. So the, the whole reason um, feedback is so important is that when you're starting out, you won't know what looks good or why your image doesn't look um, like the, the other stuff that you are looking at online. So that's why asking for feedback online can, uh, can really help you out. Um, so there's a number of sites out there that I'm sure you are aware of, but uh, for those who don't know, CG Society is a good one. It's not architecture focused, it's sort of everything, but there is of course lots of architectural work on there. Another dedicated site is cgarchitect.com. There's not that many people commenting on there, but it is good for inspiration as well. Um, there is you know, a few comments here and there. Um, I think there's a, the forum is more active, but that's a place as well. But I think the best one I recommend is Evermotion. This seems to be where the majority of um, sort of the best architecture artists are posting their work. Um, there's less replies than you would probably think. There's some stunning artwork that gets posted on there and not much feedback. Um, but if if you post your artwork, don't just, just post the image and, and then, you know, hit submit. Post it and then leave spe specifically right out this line, um, please, uh, oh no, what, 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 what is it I normally say? Uh, I welcome your honest critiques, honest feedback. Tell me whatever it is that you're feeling. You, you want, because basically the thing is, is when you see somebody's piece of artwork and you don't like it and you, you think it actually looks horrible, the fear that a lot of people have, and this is why I personally think that a lot of like, you know, beginner artwork doesn't get many comments is that people are scared of offending the person. So if you can put that past, if you can get a thick skin and just say, look, I want you to tell me bluntly, just be totally honest with me. Why doesn't this image work? And in doing that, you will get a lot of replies and people will be honest with you. And that is what you're after. You want to know how to improve. And then your next image will be better. Then you post that one and you ask for feedback again and you repeat this process. And it's actually fun. You get better over time. Second thing, oh, sorry, third thing, step number three, become a sponge for information. So this is for pretty much any topic really in the world. If you're interested in learning a guitar, just become a sponge at any magazine, you know, guitar magazine, whatever. Same is true for architectural visualization. Anything remotely related to architecture at all, you should just start reading architecture magazines, any architecture websites, um, any architecture books. There's so much out there, just soak it up because it's not gonna be in any order. Nobody's gonna explain it to you explicitly in the right order, but you will get tips from different places. And through that, you can then um, uh, learn how to do it basically. So a site that I recommend you start if you're not interested in buying books or whatever, um, Ronan Beckerman, uh, that's a great website. He has a section called uh, Making Of, where he gets basically really stunning pieces of artwork that people have made and he approaches the artist and he gets them to write making of articles and you'll learn a lot from that because they give their opinions on why they do certain things the post-processing stage um, why they actually made the image was it for a client or was it just for fun there's there's so much that you'll learn from that and there's just pages and pages of it. So that's a great place to start but if you really want to learn the theory behind everything, I recommend cracking open your wallet and buying some books. So these are the books that I read when I was uh, when I basically set myself the goal of learning architecture from head to toe. Um, I uh, what was the first book that I bought? Um, I think it was a lot of uh, for, photo photography and architecture books. Um, so there's the bottom one there for photographing architecture and interiors. That one's pretty good. Photographing building inside and out. Um, and then I went to Japan and I bought those two Teidao and Dao books. Um, pretty much anything out there. Uh, Universal Principles of Design is also just great, not for just architecture, but for anything. And then uh, those Kindle books along the bottom there as well, also highly recommend, especially that second one, Architectural Photography. It's a great book. Um, 
So just get out there and just read whatever you can. And uh, as you go through the books, this is me. Uh, I took, asked my wife to take a photo of me as I was reading it. Um, as you're reading the books, write down notes. So just have a pen and paper next to you and just write down just the tips as you go through it, whatever it is, just keep a notebook and just write down tips. This will seem tedious, all right? As you're, as you're doing this, it won't immediately be clear to you why it is that you're doing something like why am I writing out this one little line on the colors of wallpaper or whatever it, it won't become clear to you but overall the bigger picture it will make sense so once you've got a whole bunch of notes you can then start piecing things together why does that keep popping up um so for example um you know over here I I wrote down like a list of all the uh main topics um that go into uh creating you know the various parts but like why is architecture there the actual design and the architecture itself and just and this is is optional right this is i'm just telling you the method that i used um to, to learn it and this is a method that you can take um so yes basically just become a sponge and just write down whatever you can and you'll eventually begin to see the overall grand picture step number four photograph architecture so this is important for um the actual uh, framing and learning how to make a picture look beautiful, how to make architecture look beautiful. Because this is the thing, architecture by itself, even in its real photorealistic form, is actually quite hard to photograph and make look make it look interesting. Um, so if you just grab a camera, even if it's just your iPhone, whatever it is that you've got, and, and just go out there and just try to take photographs of buildings that actually look interesting, and you will immediately find, wow, this is hard work. Um, and through doing that, you will learn a lot. You will learn that, you know, zooming in on the close-ups of, of certain parts of the building are better than doing wide angles sometimes. Um, it's better sometimes to not have like an empty, minimalistic room, but to have a room that looks lived in, that actually has some character to it, like the person that actually lived there. You'll learn so much through this process. So I had the opportunity and the pleasure to uh, go to Japan. I went to Osaka and I explored some of the many, um, the great buildings by Teidao and Dao. Uh, that was a huge learning experience for me. You don't have to go through that, of course. You don't, obviously not everyone has to go to Japan to figure this stuff out. But if you've got any, you know, if you've got a city nearby, just go to the city. Just walk into a library, try and photograph the library. Do whatever you can, even if it's just your house. Try and create some interesting photographs using just your camera. Because it, it's, this is important because when you, when it comes to CG, when you're actually creating the buildings in CG, if you don't understand how to make something look good in in real life it, you could put hours like a whole month into creating this interior and then have no idea how to actually capture it so that it looks stunning so that it actually looks attractive so photography is such a uh, huge and and vast topic um for the very reason that that photographing the real world and making it look attractive is hard work and even more so in the cg because you have to deal with the fact that you don't have something that looks realistic yet. You have to get past that and you have to make it look good later on. So learning how to do it firsthand will save you a bunch of time down the line. So if you can do that, definitely recommend it. Um, oh yeah, I forgot. There's a couple of other photos here uh, from the Chikatsu Museum. This sounds actually the, uh, the buildings from uh, the 3rd and the 7th by Alex Roman. You might know that animation. And this was another building as well. Anyway, just some other photos. Um, and the final step that, no, second last step that I'll leave you with is, uh, is steal like crazy. Now, that might sound like terrible advice. Why would I advise people to steal things? Sounds like plagiarism. There is a difference between plagiarism and stealing. Now, if you want to know the whole thing, because I don't have time to explain in this video, I, read an, I wrote an article on this uh, on my website, blenderguru.com. Uh, it's called Steal Like an Artist, which is the title of the book that I was basically summarizing, um, where I walk through basically the whole topic of it. But in a summary, here's some quotes from some of the big artists out there on why they steal. And I, I love this first one by Gary Panter. If you have one person you're influenced by, everyone will say you're the next whoever. But if you rip off 100 people, everyone will say you're so original. 
I love that because that's that's essentially what you end up doing with architecture. You don't just go, I'm just going to make something original and then just start drawing freehand, whatever it is. You always pick from things that you know. So what I did for my, my image that's in 3D World Magazine, I went on house.com, H-O-U-Z-Z.com, and I searched for um, uh, images that were minimalistic and of an industrial design. And then I just plucked a whole bunch of different ideas from a variety of different images. I, there was like probably six or seven images that I took each, you know, different parts of the scene from. And then I put them together, put my own little spin on it. And that was the thing. And then it ended up looking like a unique creation. That's what this is about. That's why I say steal like crazy. Another one, David Bowie. The only art I ever steal is stuff that I can steal from. Um, I like this one by <clears throat> Yoshi Yamamoto. Start copying what you love. Copy, 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 copy. At the end of the copy, you will find yourself. So there's more of that in the book, Steal Like an Artist, which I highly recommend as well. And, uh, and you'll learn a lot in that. And finally, the last piece of advice that I will leave you with is something that you probably don't want to hear, which is practice, practice, practice. Now, nobody likes to do work. And, you know, going through the tough stage of failing and failing and failing isn't that fun. But if you go into it with the the uh, beforehand, the ex- expectation that you are learning and that failing is a part of it, um, it can actually be enjoyable. You will uh, gradually over time, if you keep at it for long enough, you will notice and people will tell you that your stuff is looking good and it'll become a surprise to you but at, it, it takes that initial step to actually get into it to practice to actually give it a go because that's something that most people just don't do most people will look at a piece of artwork and they'll go oh, that looks amazing oh i will never be that great and that's just i don't know that to me it's, it's just weak you can do it anybody can do it but you you just have to commit yourself and go through that stage so practice, practice, practice. So like I said, start by recreating photographs, post them online, get feedback, and then start the next one. As you're like starting out from like, like just do one image a week, post one after the next, just every week. If you did that for an entire year, by the end of it, by golly, you would be an amazing artist. Trust me, just one image a week, 52 weeks a year, you would be like top, right? Like one of the top artists out there. You can do it. It just takes the uh, part of, uh, of practicing. This is, uh, to give you an example, this is where I started with one of my uh, my images. Um, so this is like the early stages, figuring out how to put stuff into the scene. Um, changing the camera a little bit. I didn't really know where I was going, sort of throwing things together. Um, and then this was the eventual sort of final result that I ended up with. So that is practice. And that was, I think, three months of work. I spent way too long on that image. In hindsight, that could have been done in, I don't know, two weeks. Um, but I was just getting started. And so things were taking a little bit longer than normal. But anyways, so that's my advice for you guys. That is a summary of what we just discussed. Recreate photographs, seek feedback on those photographs, become a sponge for all and any information, photograph architecture yourself with anything you've got, an iPhone, whatever you have, steal like crazy from anything out there, and then practice, practice, practice. That's all it takes. So I hope that was useful. If you are at all interested in um, learning more about architecture, I actually have a full course on it not to sort of, you know, promo myself here, but if people are interested in it, um, there is help available. Um, so I have a full course called The Architecture Academy, which you can get at thearchitectureacademy.com, um, where I give people the full rundown, the fundamentals on how to create architecture and actually get good at it. So that's if you're interested, but otherwise, um, thanks very much for watching and I wish you the best in becoming a great architectural artist. Thanks.